بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم uh, welcome uh, everyone to today's lecture uh, in which we will discuss everything regarding the membership of Royal College of General Practitioner International the one that is released by the uh, Royal College of General Practitioners in UK uh, in this uh, lecture we'll discuss everything related to the MRCGB International regarding the uh, with the benefit, the recognition, the exams and the eligibility criteria, everything that is related to MRCB International, we will try to cover here in this lecture. So if you're listening to this lecture, this is the best uh, lecture that you could start as a step forward in considering MRCB International as a postgraduate qualification for your career, which is, of course, a post-qualification in family medicine, but in UK, they are calling family medicine as general practitioners. My name is uh, Dr. Mahmoud al -Ammari. I am provider of one-shot courses uh, for MRCB International since 2018. Alhamdulillah, we managed to help uh, colleagues of over, over 380 colleagues to pass the second part of the exam, which is OSCE, CCA, the one that I'm uh, focusing in providing the courses. However, I'm providing help as well for all, for part one uh, or the other parts of the uh, exams as regard uh, advice. Uh, I passed MRCGB International in uh, 2018 and uh, in 2023, I passed FRCGB International, which is the fellowship as well. I received this, uh, the uh, fellowship. And inshallah, we will go through the uh, details of MRCB International in this lecture. Before we start, this is a disclaimer that I'm not official representative of uh, our CGP at all or any, any examination center. I'm just uh, uh, volunteering to provide information. This information is based on my understanding and knowledge. And uh, by the time I'm talking now, which is in December 2023, the information could be updated in any time. So the information are subjected to change. You need to review the most current and official information uh, via the official websites and the relevant organizations. And also you may follow my Facebook page, One Shot MRCGP for updates, but remember always to verify with the official sources. So welcome aboard. In this lecture, we will discuss what is MRCGP International, What's the benefit and recognition? The exam centers and dates and fees, and we'll compare between the exam centers and how to apply for part one exam, applied knowledge test, and uh, what can one-shot courses provide to your part one preparation and how to prepare for OSCE exam and how can one-shot courses help you in OSCE exam as well and how to apply for MRCGB international exams mainly part one, and then I'll open the room for answering questions. So let's start. First of all, my mission is you put your name over here. This is the uh, membership certificate that you will receive, inshallah, once you finish the uh, exams of the MRCGB International. The site will be written here, and your name, inshallah, will be written here, and the date of the uh, receiving the membership will be put here. What is MRCGB? MRCB stands for the Membership of Royal College of General Practitioners based in UK. Postgraduate is postgraduate qualification for family medicine specialty, which is called in UK general practice, as we said earlier. And one important thing to understand, it's awarded by the RCGP London UK, not awarded by the center, not awarded by South Asia or Dubai. So there is misconception about this. I want to clarify. Some colleagues say, I want to get the, the MRCGP South Asia or MRCGP Dubai. It's the center, the, the one that you're accredited, that will be written here. So your relation to the center will be the name right here only. But the if you're going to do primary source verification like data flow, it will be from UK. The origin of the certificate will be from UK. That's the what you're going to write in your CV as well. But it's called MRCGP International. Okay, and the exams of the MRCB International is held in seven international centers, and 
the only center is not held is the one granting the certificate. This is funny that it's not uh, the international MRCGB uh, doesn't have a center in UK, unlike the other Royal College exams like MRCP or MRC OG. Uh, uh, the uh, they are they have a center in UK, but here since it's international, it doesn't have a center in UK. Why is that? Because there is another version of MRCB. It's called MRCB UK, in which they have the center only in UK. So here we have the centers all uh, distributed all over uh, many countries, but not in UK. However, the one granting the certificate is the Royal College in UK. To get the membership, you must complete full MRCB international examinations of any international centers. Uh, we're going to mention them earlier, uh, uh, later. Then pay the annual membership fees. So you will pay once annual membership fees to get the certificate. After that, you need to pay yearly in order to get the uh, fellowship. So if you want to get the fellowship after five years of the membership, which is granted after five years without exam, but you need to fulfill some requirements, you need to pay yearly to get the fellowship. But if you want to get the membership only, you don't want to get the fellowship, you can pay the first fees only. However, you will not be able to get uh, the primary source verification like data flow report unless you continue paying. Like for example, you get the MRCB International uh, this year, and after two years, you need to get the primary source verification, but you didn't pay the fees, they will not respond to any organization that's asking about the verification of this certificate unless you pay the fees, uh, the annual fees for uh, the membership. And the annual fees is continuous. It's not like for a few years and stop. So you have to pay it continuous. That's what they require you to pay. and. After five years, if you continue paying five years of membership, uh, then you can get the fellowship after fulfilling the following criteria. Continuous maintenance of good standing. Good standing means that you pay the five years of membership and significant contribution to family medicine in one of six areas. This is highlighted in details in a separate lecture. You can review in YouTube. Uh, and also I'll put the link here in uh, below the this video, uh, which is uh, how to get FRCGP International. I, I got it already this year and I want to explain to you, uh, to help you all to get it. So I, I did this lecture, it's very uh, detailed lecture about the six areas of achievement that you need to fulfill one of them at least. And finally, the third requirement is recommendation by two persons. One of them is member or fellow of Royal College, either, either have MRCB International or if RCB International, one of them should have uh, the, the membership or fellowship. The other one should work with you, should have been working with you, but not necessarily to have the MRCB International, could be from any other faculty or any other postgraduate uh, qualification. If you got all the three, you can get the FRCGB. The details is in another video, you can refer to it when you need it. So what's the benefits of MRCGB? international first of all improve your skills in family medicine approach and management and this really uh, has been expressed by many colleagues who discussed this with me that they really they changed the way of practice after getting to be international uh, secondly is that it's similar to lab exams and oet speaking subset uh, subtest in case you want to resume in uh, any other career want to take ot or prep it, it helps very much to that you can find that you already have some experience to go through those exams and three, there is e-learning materials in RCGB website. Once you get the membership, they will have you will have access to those e-learning materials. And also there is online venues and uh, physical venues and other benefits. Uh, all of them are in the RCGB uh, website. You will you will get an account. Uh, once you pay the membership fees, you will have free access to those materials. And finally, recognize a specialist family medicine in several countries that will go through them one by one in details. So let's talk now about recognition. Recognitions in MRCB International, some countries treat uh, the graduates of all centers treated the same, and some countries treat some graduates in different way than other graduates according to their nationality. And some, center, some uh, 
countries, uh, they are treating all graduates of all centers the same way. So let's take them one by one and starting by the country that gives this certificate, which is United Kingdom. And this has been updated just the last month in November 2023. What exactly the update and what was before? Uh, first of all, I want to clarify the situation before we go through the details here. Let's talk about the situation before the update of November 2023. There has been a pathway called CEGPR pathway. This CEGPR pathway is a pathway for overseas qualified candidates who want to work in UK with their postgraduate qualification that they have received it overseas. So, for example, I have Master in Family Medicine or PhD in Family Medicine, MD. I want to work in UK, so I present to them this postgraduate qualification. And I told them, do you recognize this postgraduate qualification to work in UK? They will enroll me to the CEGPR pathway, which is to show your competency that with this postgraduate qualification, you have the skills that equivalent to the same training program of CCT in UK, with, with which is the, the training program given for MRCGP UK candidates inside UK. So they want to make sure that you have a training program with you that provide uh, details, comprehensive assessment, that you have fulfilled all of it, that it should be equivalent to the one given in UK. Of course, the old pathway, CG bar pathway, was very difficult. Very difficult because most or almost all the applicants, when they apply, they will found to be rejected. Their applications were rejected because they were not fulfilling the criteria for working as uh, for the same as training program of MRCGP UK. That's why the previous CGPR pathway was very difficult and very complicated, and most of the applications were rejected. So what happened now in November 2023? What happened is that they changed the regulations of CGPR portfolio pathway, uh, uh, the CGPR pathway, and they rename it to CGPR portfolio. Of course, all of you knows what portfolio. Portfolio is like detailed CV about your uh, career. So uh, some some of you, of, of you may have provided already and if they have like master degree and they should, they are required to provide uh, portfolio. Some masters, they provide they request to provide portfolio. So the point is that they changed the regulation not to be uh, th that you should provide an evidence of your competency, but not necessarily to be e equivalent to the UK training program of MRCGB UK uh, specifically or precisely like it was once before. They made uh, regulations that they want you to show competency in 13 specific capabilities for general practice. And this regulation has made things a lot easier. So what they want from you is that they want you to have a postgraduate qualification, either MRCGB international or anything else. Any other postgraduate qualification can work in this pathway. Uh, but MRCB International specifically was mentioned in their guidance. The, the, the name of MRCB International was mentioned in, in two pages of their guidance specifically. So and we'll get back to this point uh, later on in details. But the point is that the CGPR portfolio pathway is mainly that you will provide certificate of overseas qualification such as MRCGB International. And with it, you have to provide evidence that you have fulfilled competency in 13 specific capabilities for general practice. And the good news is that there is not, uh, the training program, it should, it's not necessarily to be structured official training program. So this is very good news. And I'll tell you why. Because MRCGB International, some centers, they don't, request training. So you may be listening to this recording, you don't have a training record, so it's not required anymore. And this is the good news. And actually this, I like it very much because this is a very brilliant way of thinking that not necessarily for the colleague 
or the candidate, the one that you you are uh, disqualified to work in a specific place, to have a training rather than outcome of training. Outcome of the training is more important than the training itself. We know for sure that some training centers are just rewards in paper. Some some of the t- trainees, I know them personally, they are not fulfilling the requirements except on papers only, but the real outcome is not fulfilled. So they want to see, they want you to show them that you are competent in your practice, even with only experience, but with, with very good outcome that is very much similar as if you have taken structured official training. So they are no longer requiring you to be precisely equivalent to the MRCB UK CCT program, but uh, they want you to show that you are competent. So now the job is much easier. It's not that uh, much easy, but easier in comparison to the one before. So you will apply with the MRCB certificate and you will fill application. So what's required in steps? First of all, you should get an OET test or ILET test and make online GMC account. And of course, after getting the MRCB International, you will apply to the CGPR pathway. And they are providing guidance. And the kind of, the guidance link I will put uh, below the video in the comments. This is an example of the evidence that they want. For example, they want case studies. These case studies, they are describing what is it, like set of details reflective case studies, an essential part of your incubation uh, uh, evidence, uh, like pre- provide eight to 10 case studies. Like you have did case studies in your practice that consider like, for example, you have a case that you have uh, uh, managed very well, and this case was complex, you can present it in in written article that it can fulfill all the areas that they are considered as relevant. Those are the, the specific criteria, fitness to practice, maintenance, ethical approach, communication, consultation, data gathering, clinical examination, making decisions, clinical management. And they are giving examples for all the 13 areas, how they are fulfilled. They could be fulfilled more than once in different areas. Like for example, case studies fulfill the points from number two to 13. Multi-source feedback fulfill the criteria number one, two, nine, 10, 11, and so on. Once you fulfill all this evidence, you can apply. And when you apply, your application will be reviewed within, for, uh, within three to six months, and then you will be replied with an outcome, either rejected or need to be reviewed or accepted. If need to be reviewed, they will return it to you. Please fulfill some or verify some things or need to clarify a few things. Of course, all this will be written in English and it's it's more like a portfolio as those who those of you who did a portfolio before know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just showing your skills. Whatever you did, just show it here. Of course, this needs to be uh, competent. You need to be competent in, in practice. You need to be, um, you, you cannot apply in this pathway if you are unemployed, for example. You have to be employed and you have to do things. Sometimes some evidence, it may not be available at your area, but you can do it volunteer work, uh, volunteer work. You can do it volunteer work or clinical attachment for a couple of months in some area to fulfill some evidence. And if you did brainstorming, mostly, I have reviewed this evidence, mostly you have fulfilled it already. But you just you need to think and recall what you have done and try to collect the documents and collect the evidence and then you can apply it and write it in in, in english of course if uh, if it's already provided uh, in in another language you have to translate it to english if you have been accepted you will get the gmc alliances general medical council license to practice and enrolled in the gb register okay uh, you can work at this point in private GP in UK, but to work in NHS, National Health uh, Society, uh, the you have to be enrolled in something called International Induction Program, which takes three to six months, and it includes work-based assessment and MCQs, and this is actually like some form of introductory uh, program to work in uh, as a GP uh, in NHS. 
because they consider NHS they need, it needs some form of orientation. So uh, this one is something optional if you want to work in NHS, but if you want to, to work as, for example, a private GP or work as locum or work uh, outside UK using the GMC license, then you don't need to get into the international induction program. This uh, details of international induction program, it has its own uh, reference website. You can refer to it. It just contains some like uh, work based assessment, some MCQ, some uh, learning modules that you have to finish. And uh, according to your outcome, they will uh, put you to work uh, independently uh, as GP in NHS. Of course, there are some clarifications. Some of you asking now, okay, and which in which step I should do PLAB? PLAB is not required. You are overriding PLAB in this pathway. And in PLAB, if you finish PLAB, you will get the, uh, the to, to work as GP in UK, but not specialized GP. But here, this pathway, we are talking about specialized, independent, general practitioner, family physician in UK. Okay, so... Uh, this is the first thing I would like to clarify. The second, I said before, that this applies to any overseas family medicine qualification. So uh, you can, if you have a postgraduate qualification, other than a master's degree international, and you you want to apply to UK, you can do this. And if you have both a master's degree international and any other postgraduate qualification, this is even a higher chance of being accepted, inshallah. And uh, of course, any other postgraduate qualification will need primary source verification according to the either EPIC, I think, or uh, I do, I'm not sure what exactly they apply. I think uh, EPIC is the one they are accepting, if, if I pronounce it correctly. But in the good thing about MRCB International, it doesn't need primary source verification because, of course, it's from UK, so they will not require primary source verification from you. They can verify from their own colleague. And uh, the MRCB International is the one mentioned specifically as being accepted in this pathway of the CGPR portfolio, the other postgraduate qualifications, maybe you need to verify first with them that it's accepted as postgraduate qualification uh, to apply in CGPR pathway. This is the uh, pages in which it's mentioned specifically, the MRCGB International. You can see here the applicants who have passed examination accredited for MRCGB International must still demonstrate their evidence through specific capabilities listed in this guidance. Okay, and also, uh, they hear that they said that examinations accredited for RCGB International have their own curriculum designed for practice. They are justifying why MRCB International is not accepted without evidence of practice or without evidence of capability, entertaining capabilities, because this, they know that it's designed for the country or region which hosts the examination and the, the, the assessment is not uh, completely fulfilled in the in the exams of MRCB International. So they want to make sure that you have clinical evidence of 13 capabilities uh, that you are working at the standard of tracking curriculum in UK. This is, uh, of course, as I said earlier, no need to provide programmed training. If you if you provide the, the, the evidence without even being an official training, just experience-based, it will be accepted. So in summary of UK, English test is required for non-English country graduates and then apply through the CGPR portfolio pathway after the MRCB International, of course. Uh, prepare an evidence, not easy, but not impossible, and get your GMC license to work as specialized GP in UK. And if you want to work in NHS, you have to take the IIP to work as GP in NHS. This is the number of General Medical Council. If you want to inquire, they have a WhatsApp number. This is very good. They are responding to the WhatsApp number in their working hours. So they can you can ask them in any queries about this pathway. They are uh, promptly responding and it's very good service that they have provided, uh, especially that it's WhatsApp. You can just send the message and wait for their response. Next one is Australia. Australia has, uh, since March 2023, recognized the MRCGB international only, so graduates of MRCGB international, uh, South Asia only, sorry, the center of South Asia. Uh, we will get through the centers in details, but South Asia specifically is the one being accepted in Australia. In UK, all the centers, but in uh, Australia, only South Asia, the one mentioned in the reference, recognized as partially comparable qualification for practice experience uh, pathway 
the four specialists. It's called PEP uh, Specialist Pathway to work as GP in Australia. What is this pathway is all about? This pathway uh, simply involves that you will uh, apply to something called PEP pathway. And then uh, once you are accepted, they will come to you to say that your application is partially comparable, proceed in your application. You will look for a job in Australia under supervision, something called job uh, GP under supervision, to work and it's salarized, it's salary, it's with salary, to work under a consultant for six months. And after the six months, you have to finish work-based assessment and learning modules. And after this, you can take the if the three if our ECGP exams, the Fellowship of Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. And once you take it, you will get license to practice as independent GP in Australia, and you will gain the FR ECGP certificate. So the pathway of FR ECGP, without this pathway, it's two years program, and it should be preceded by the AMC, the Australian Medical Council exam. In this pathway, you can bypass the standard pathway of AMC application, and you can just apply with MRCGP International South Asia to finish FRC ECGP in six months rather than two years. So this is the whole about to finish uh, FRCGP in six months, uh, working salarized GP under supervision, and then you can get a license to practice as GP in Australia as well as if our ECGP certificate. So this is all about Australia. And uh, the good news, uh, fortunate news is in November 2023, they even reduced the requirements. There were, there were difficult requirements regarding specified CME in the application. It should be specified to particular uh, timelines and particular subjects. But now it's no longer just, they just want you to provide CME, uh, regardless of the specificities before given. And uh, there was also 10 cases required. The, they are no longer required. So your application here is uh, much similar to the UK as a, like a mini portfolio, but not complicated as, not difficult as UK. If you compare it to the UK, it's uh, UK is more difficult. Australia application is much easier, but you have to do primary source verification first and then apply and uh, fill your application and apply, and then you will receive an outcome. The language, of course, is, is required, but not at the beginning. The language is required before going to work under supervision uh, for six months. I given already details also video for Australia. You can watch it in the comments. I will put it uh, the link of the video in the comments. I have given details about that way of Australia, uh, but before the last update of November, so just keep it in mind that the last update of November is, uh, is uh, not included in the video link that I will uh, put. Uh, the next one is U UAE, United Arab Emirates. United Arab Emirates recognized the MRCB International as specialist family medicine. After three years of clearing MRCB International, you can apply as specialist. And the good news is that the UK uh, update, which qualify you to get a GMC license, the GMC license to practice, to be put in GP register, a specialized GP, qualify you to be consultant in UAE after five years. Many of you don't know this information. They did not connect the two things. In, U in, in UAE, MRCGP International alone is only specialist. It will not qualify you co to consultant unless you have a GMC license to practice. So if you get the GMC license, so let's get back again to UK. Some of you may, may, may want to take uh, this step and stop get the GMC license to work as GP and work overseas. Overseas such as where? Such as UAE can work as consultant after five years of MRCGP International uh, just uh, with the GMC license. So once you get the GMC license, wait until you finish five years of MRCGP International, you can upgrade to consultant in UAE with the MRCGP International. Saudi Arabia is also recognized the uh, MRCGP International as family physician. However, it needs experience that it's variable according to the area you are working at. They are looking at the place you are working. If the place you are working in the, in the two years after clearing MRCGB uh, as uh, experience, not as a training program, if you are working as experience, 
in accredited training center in Saudi Arabia for family Saudi board, then it will be only two years after Master Jibin Tarshan can apply for specialist. If it's a place it's which is not accredited, either inside or outside Saudi Arabia, then it's after four years of clearing in Master Jibin International. Those are the recognized places of training in Saudi Arabia. You can review it in the Saudi Council website. If you're working in any of those areas, then you need only two years after Master Jibin International to be specialist. If outside those areas, then you need to wait for four years. Also, this is not a recognition, but this is a benefit that holders of Marathi Peterson working in MOH Saudi Arabia can get 50% increase of basic salary even before the Saudi health, health uh, specialty recognition. So once they acquire a Master's degree international. However, to be honest, some colleagues couldn't get this 50% increase because of some uh, difficulties in their workplace. But uh, I, there are definitely, there are some colleagues who, who managed to get this 50% increase. So you may look for it if you can, but uh, it's not certain that you will, can get it depending on the site. The next country is Qatar. Qatar is uh, categorized, uh, the MRCB International as Category 3. Category 3, along with other postgraduate qualifications in the family medicine, that you must provide evidence of structured training program. So you should provide structured training program, uh, whatever training you have uh, been fulfilled at least three years from any other qualification, you can provide it along with the MRCB International to be uh, specialist uh, family medicine. Uh, before March 2023, it was category two, but FRCGB, not MRCGB. But uh, unfortunately, it was downgraded since March. Uh, as I said, the recognition is uh, variable. It, it may subject to change depending on each uh, local country board uh, that uh, that decide about the overseas qualification. So it was it was category three, but but uh, since March 2023, it was downgraded to category three. Uh, also, Pakistan recognized a specialist equivalent to MCBS qualification, and in Egypt, qualified since once you receive it, it's qualified by. The medical syndicate, not the MOH, the medical syndicate, as a specialist and consultant after 10 years of MRCGB. And if you manage to get FRCGB after five years of MRCGB, it will be uh, only two years after FRCGB or seven years after MRCGB that you can get consultant. Okay, so if you only uh, get MRCGB, you did not upgrade to FRCGB after 10 years. If you upgrade to FRCGB, uh, so you will get uh, only two years more, so total seven, to get a consultant in uh, medical syndicate in Egypt. The next country is Kuwait. Kuwait is not treating all the graduates equally. It's treating the Kuwaiti nationals in different than other non-Kuwaiti nationals. Kuwaiti nationals uh, recognized as specialist family medicine if they acquire MRCGB international, and also those enrolled in Kuwaiti board program who couldn't pass the Kuwaiti board exam for family medicine, they can replace it with MRCGB International. If they finish it, they can upgrade to senior registrar even if they did not uh, pass the Kuwaiti board exam. Also, uh, one country that treat uh, graduates uh, uh, differently, the Cyprus. Cyprus uh, Center treat the nationals, the Cyprus nationals, uh, as specialist family medicine after acquiring MRCB International, but the non cyprus nationals, they are not given the, uh, the specialty. So we finished the recognition. What are the centers we are talking about? We talk about many centers here. The center of Kuwait we talk about, we talk about South Asia. Also, there is Dubai, Cyprus, Egypt, Kosovo, Malta. What's the difference between those centers? We will discuss them in details in the next slide, but we will cover mainly the three which training program is not mandatory. So there are four in which training program is mandatory. We will not go through them. What does it mean training program is mandatory? It means that in order to apply for MRCGB international centers in those countries, you have to be enrolled in a training program before you can finish the examinations of MRCGB international. So you have to be enrolled in Egyptian fellowship program in Egypt, in Kuwaiti board in Kuwait, in Kosovo, there's also program for training and Malta as well. But for South Asia, you can apply without any training program enrolled or just to go for the exams. 
you don't even have need to have prior training before South Asia. Also, Dubai the same and Cyprus the same. No need to have training program before that. If you started one center, you cannot continue in another center. This is very important. So if you took part one in South Asia, you cannot continue part two in Cyprus or in Malta. You have to continue in South Asia. Dubai, the same. Cyprus, the same. So if you, for example, decided that you will not continue in Dubai after part one, you want to you want to continue in another center, you have to start from the beginning in any other center if you are eligible to apply for it. So now let's talk about the three centers that we that uh, does not involve training, which are the MRCGP, uh, International South Asia, and Dubai and Cyprus. Let's start with the South Asia, the, the one that, uh, the most famous one, especially the one accredited for Australia, recognized by Australia. The eligibility criteria, you should have internship plus any of the following, either two years training course, program training course, or two years diploma in family medicine without uh, training, but uh, uh, without training experience and without even clinical experience. But the diploma should be recognized by the MRCP International South Asia body or one year training program or one year diploma in family medicine and two years clinical experience. So it's either two years training or two year diploma or one year plus two years clinical experience. And one of those two years clinical experience should be at least uh, one of them should be in family medicine uh, or general practice. Or the final one, which is the non-training program, five years of clinical experience, in which at least minimum of them, three years of them should be in family medicine or general practice. And the other years in specialties allied to family medicine or general practice. For example, you can apply if you have five years experience, three of them general practitioner and two of them uh, OB, for example, OB specialist or uh, uh, ophthalmology or EMT or whatsoever. So five years should be uh, at least three years of them as general practitioner or family medicine. But however, this is the eligibility of the two exams. But part one, part one exam, they may accept less criteria which is to apply after 18 months experience of general practice. Six months of them, uh, sorry, 18 months experience, six months of them should be in family, uh, general practice. So those who are fresh graduates, you can start to uh, to do the MRCB international exams after one and a half year of, of passing, of, uh, of graduation. Of course, internship is not counted. Okay, so one and a half year, at least six of them or more should be in general practice. You uh, you can apply for part one. However, part two, you have to wait for the five years experience. Okay, of course, the five years experience, the minimum is uh, three years general practice. But if it's four or five, of course, definitely it's accepted. They just want you to have at least minimum of them three years in family medicine or general practice. And here in, for part one, minimum of them six months in family medicine or general practice to be eligible, but it could be more. So here is partial eligibility for part one, one and a half years. And here is five years, the uh, full eligibility for the two exams if uh, to, wait, to wait in five years. So here you can say that if you apply for part one after 18 months and then you pass part one, you cannot apply for M for part two until you finish the five years. So it's about three and a half years spent waiting for your eligibility. So you have to think again before doing this because the full eligibility, we will take later on, It once you finish part one, you, you need to finish part two in six years. So if you applied here, then you have only remaining uh, if we counted uh, from from five years, one and a half, that's remaining three and a half. So you're remaining only two and a half years to finish OSCE exam. And if you finish those six years from part one, uh, they well, you have to repeat part one again. You will get back to this uh, uh, later on. So the MRCB International South Asia is two exams. The order is mandatory, part one first, and then followed by part two. Part one is applied knowledge test exam contains 200 questions in single best answer MCQ format. The time allowed for completion of the paper is three and a half hours. Uh, so you can see that 
it's uh, you can hardly have one minute for each question this is uh, the challenge in this exam the challenge is in the speed you have to you don't have time to think you have to just choose and move to the next question the sites of the exams it's uh, chennai india colombo in sri lanka uh, dakka uh, jeddah riyadh karachi new delhi and lahore uh, before there was a center in abu dhabi but in uh, Recently, they changed it to Riyadh, replaced it by Riyadh. So the centers uh, of the part one exam is in South Asia countries and in Saudi Arabia. It's no longer available in UAE. Before it was one center during COVID, they opened in Abu Dhabi, but they closed the game. The dates in May in November and November. The fees is around 530. Uh, sorry, here Abu Dhabi should be corrected because it's no longer available. It's either Jeddah and uh, Riyadh and 413 other venues were in South Asia. And there are unlimited attempts. What does it mean, unlimited attempts? If you apply to part one and could not clear it, you can apply again and again and again up to 100 times. They will not decide that you cannot apply anymore. You can apply as long as you can until you pass the exam. The next one is the OSCE, uh, objective, objective, uh, objective Structure Clinical Examination, which is com composed of 14 stations. You go to those stations. There is a patient inside, not a real patient, but actor. He's saying that I have chest pain, I have the abdominal pain. Then you have to proceed and do a diagnosis and management in 10 minutes. Examination. Uh, history, examination, and management in only 10 minutes. And th this is a station. You have 14 stations such as this. And between those stations, there are five rest stations between each one of them. And between each station and another, there is transition of one and a half minutes between each one and another. The sites of the uh, OSCE exam is Karachi in Pakistan, Colombo in Sri Lanka, and Chennai in India. They started this the last year. And uh, uh, in, in 2023, this is the first time ever been held. And uh, 2024, it's in the calendar, so mostly it will be fixed. So they have three centers, Karachi in March, Colombo, uh, Chennai in July, and Colombo in uh, September or October, sometimes November. The dates, uh, as I said earlier already, and the fees is uh, 650 uh, pounds sterling. Uh, and it's subjected to 3% annual increase almost like this because in 2023, it was 630 and now it's 650 uh, pound uh, sterling. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's equivalent in US dollars, but I think it's more like uh, eight, uh, 800, something like this. Passing AKT is mandatory to be eligible to sit for OSCE exam. And once you finish AKT, pass AKT, you have only six years from AKT to passing to pass OSCE or three OSCE attempts. So you have either to pass OSCE in three trials or uh, in less than three trials. Of course, you have to, you know, you know, the third trial is the final one, either pass or you have to repeat AKT again, even if six years not finished. So which over, whichever sooner. For example, if you spend five years to, to from AKT to do OSCE, and in the year number six, you got only one attempt of OSCE you could not clear. You don't have any other two attempts because six years passed already. If any applies, you will be have to repeat AKT again, as I said before. After passing OSCE, you will pay fees for membership of RCGP. It depends on the country you live in. If you live in a country or that uh, high socioeconomic country, they will uh, get charge you for higher amount than if you live in the country or work in a country that uh, it's a uh, low socioeconomic country. The eligibility criteria for Dubai Center that you should have completed or expected to have completed within three months of the written examination, uh, not less than three years duration full time or equivalent full uh, part-time in vocational training course for family medicine or practiced for three years full-time as independent GP or family medicine practitioner in primary care setting. So they want either three years training or three years experience, but the three years experience should be exclusively GP or family medicine practitioner in primary care setting. 
unless you fulfill this, you will not be uh, accepted for Dubai exams. The exams are three exams in Dubai, not two. Order is not mandatory. You can take them all at once, at one session. The three exams are written paper, the called MAQ, or modified essay question. The total time for the exam is three and a half hours, consists of 12 questions. They are essay questions, short essay. Like they give you a case and they ask you what you're going to do with it. So you have to write article, what you're going to manage. And also there is a evidence-based question like a critical appraisal. And the dates is twice yearly, April and October. This is the first exam written paper. And the site is in Dubai only. So the center is only in Dubai, and the fees is 5,250 uh, Arab, uh, Arab Emirate Darahim. The next, the next exam of Dubai Center, we have three, as I said. The second exam is MCQ, multiple choice question. The total time for the exam is three hours, consists of 180 questions. In South Asia, it was uh, uh, three and a half hours in uh, 200 questions. Here is three hours. 180 questions, best of five format. The the dates is twice yearly, April and October. Uh, I'm not quite sure about, about the duration. I think in Dubai, it's three and a half, not three, but we can uh, re refer to the evidence, to, to, to the uh, official uh, reference to make sure of the duration. The site is in Dubai, the same, and the fees is the same as MEQ. The final exam is uh, the third exam is the consultation and critical skills assessment. It's the same as OSCE, but the name is CCSA exam. 14 stations with single rest station in the middle of the gate. So the same like South Asia, 14 stations with 10 minutes uh, duration of each station, but single rest station rather than uh, five rest stations uh, in South Asia. The dates is twice yearly the same as uh, April and October. Uh, one day venue only. The site is Dubai. By the way, one day venue here in Dubai, uh, the difference between it and South Asia is that in South Asia, they are uh, uh, they can accept many candidates who can apply in different days. But the exam for each individual candidate is, is only the duration of uh, 140 minutes the, because you have 10 minutes for each 14 station, so times... Uh, 10, that's for 140 plus the, the time of the station and the transition between each case and another. So it will not be more than three hours, the exam for the, each individual, either in Dubai or in South Asia, the same. Because some of the colleagues who see the, the calendar of South Asia, that is five days or six days, they think that the exam is in, you have to come in five days or six days. No, this is not right. The only exam that do this is Cyprus. And in Cyprus, they are dividing the 14 station into five days. But all the exams, you have to do 14 stations. Uh, uh, sorry, in Cyprus, they are divided into three days. First day, five day, five cases. Second day, five cases. Third day, four cases. We'll get to Cyprus next. But the point is that uh, each individual will do only 14 stations in one day. Uh, not one day, full day. It's only three hours, the duration of the exam, three hours plus. So uh, the, the CECSA... The CPR certificate is mandatory before sitting, just you can get from any uh, source and uh, you have to present it before applying to the CCSA exam. You can take CCSA first before EKT, uh, before MEQ. You can take all of them in one session, that's uh, in one, in one uh, application. So once passing any of the three exams, you have only three years to finish the other two exams, or else you'll have to repeat again all the exams. In South Asia, it was six years for part one. Here, if you take any exam, either part one or part two or MEQ or CCSA, you have only three years to finish the rest. That's why some colleagues, they want to finish it in one session. After passing the three exams, fees for membership RCGB is required, the same as South Asia. In separate center, the eligibility criteria, you must apply online, family medicine master's or diploma of University of Nicosia to apply for part one exam and must have five years of experience in primary care to apply for the OSCE exam. Uh, it's called simulated surgery. Uh, the simulated surgery, CCSA, OSCE are all the same principle. The exams are two exams, the order is mandatory, part one, the same. 200 questions, uh, MCQ format, sh should be finished in three hours. The site is Nicosia. 
and date in September once annually. Before they used to provide uh, uh, annual uh, many centers internationally, but after COVID, they made it only in Nicosia. Um, of course, Nicosia in Cyprus. So the exams in September once annually, and the fees is uh, the fees of the online masters plus a MRCGB exam. That's around twelve thousand euros. Very expensive. And the CSA exam or simulated surgery, it's 14 stations with rest stations. And as I said earlier, it's in three days. Day one, five cases. Day two, five cases. Day three, four cases. This is uh, the lately has been implemented in 2022. 20, uh, the site is Nicosia and dates in September. And the fees, uh, I'm not updated about the fees in 2024. Uh, but I think this 12 euros is not uh, changed. If it's changed, it could be changed uh, uh, and uh, yeah, increased, but not sure how much. So let's now compare the three centers. The three centers, uh, first of all, as regarding the cost, the cost of South Asia is the least, while followed by Dubai, and the most expensive is Cyprus, that's around 14,200. Number of exams in South Asia, two, in Dubai, extra written exam, they make you, and the Cyprus, two. Uh, the waiting list for practical exam, because sometimes there is waiting list, especially in Dubai, may take up to two years. But recently, the, the waiting list has improved very much, especially that many of colleagues are, are applying for South Asia. Uh, so uh, the waiting list has become shorter, not much, not uh, up to two years, can be shorter. Uh, the difficulty of the OSCE CSA or CCSA exam, the most difficult is South Asia. The passing rate less than 60%. In Dubai, less difficult, made the passing rate around 70 in the last October exam. And in Cyprus, uh, less difficult as well. Minimum required experience for part one, 18 months, this is the minimum, 18 months general practice. In Dubai, three years family medicine. In Cyprus, you don't need experience for part one, but you should finish the diploma. The minimum required experience for part two, which is five years, and uh, three years if there is training program, program, this is part two eligibility. In Dubai, three years, and in Cyprus, five years experience. The attempts allowed before expiry of the past exam, if you passed AT, AKT, you have only three OSCE trials or six years of passing AKT, whichever sooner. The Dubai is unlimited, but you should finish in three years. So it's there is no counted attempts. So for example, if you finish AKT, in October 2023, you can apply in March and in October and March and October and March. That's five attempts before they will you will expire the three years. So you have unlimited attempts. Uh, we, we counted now it will not be more than five because uh, they have two seasons in a year. So you will not be able to finish five or we can consider it six. But uh, the last one is uh, may cross the deadline of three years. And uh, the Cyprus is unlimited attempts, uh, as as far as I know. The order of the exam, AKT, then OSCE is mandatory. Uh, Dubai, no order. And in Cyprus, the order is mandatory. Size of the exam is uh, in South Asia countries as well as Saudi Arabia. And also for, uh, for OSCE, uh, Sri Lanka or Pakistan or uh, India recently. And in Dubai, only Dubai. And in Cyprus, uh, recently, Nicosia for both parts, but before it was many for part one, but I'm not sure now about the regulation, whether they return it again to be, to have the examination in different countries, uh, uh, in, in centers such as Prometric or in the Council of Cyprus, but uh, this was implemented in COVID, but I'm not sure if they made it mandatory in Nicosia now or not. We can verify this information from the official body. The recognition recognized in many countries, plus Australia, this is the benefit of South Asia over the other centers. The other centers recognize the many countries, but Australia is not one of them. Uh, South Asia is specifically mentioned to be recognized in Australia, PEP specialist pathway. So now we went through um, long but necessary information about the centers of MRCB International and uh, the exams, the eligibility. Now let's understand how to prepare for the applied knowledge 
test part one exam. Before I proceed into this, there is a separate lecture in details about part one exam specifically. I refer you to the link in the uh, comments. Uh, this is very, very useful. I highly recommend to review it, the lecture for part one, but here we'll go through it briefly. Part one main source is family medicine guidelines. South Asia Center has precisely recommend Oxford Handbook of General Practice, the updated version uh, it was released in 2020. British National Formulary for Drugs and Prescriptions and NICE guidelines, especially for uh, the more common conditions such as hypertension and WHO guidelines and protocols for local conditions such as TB, malaria, vaccination schedule. This is mentioned precisely in uh, South Asia Center. And in Dubai, they added also for AKTA, the uh, American Diabetes Association guidelines, GINA guidelines, and Joint National Convention aid. And also they add something in Dubai about also Canadian and American guidelines can be also accepted in the AKT exam of Dubai. In the exam, most of the questions are asked in format of clinical case scenarios questions. So you have to practice a lot about this scenario if you're not familiar with from any previous examinations that you did before. Memorizing the information is never enough. You need to train to apply it in clinical scenario. So the best way to practice is to solve as much questions as you can and try to learn from the outcomes of those questions and try to review the topic related to this question. For example, here, which is available in South Asia Center as sample questions. 40-year-old women complain of incomplete right-sided facial weakness and difficulty with closing her eyes, her right eye, for five days. This was preceded by pain around the ear. From this scenario, what do you think the diagnosis is? Can anyone write in the chat? But uh, try to make it quick. Just we'll have a brief discussion. What do you think? A woman who is 40 years old have right-sided facial weakness and she cannot close her right eye what would be the diagnosis and what's preceded by pain around the ear anyone would suggest in the chat but let's just make it quick to for uh, not to waste the uh, time of colleagues who are listening to the recording anyone maybe someone sent me in uh, whatsapp Yes, Bill's palsy. Excellent, Bill's palsy. So, this is this looks like Bill's palsy, but why it's not stroke? Why? Because he gave a clue here that difficulty closing her right eye. So, if you cannot close the right eye, this means that this is lower motor neural lesion. Because if you can close the right eye, this means that it's upper motor neural lesion because there is compensatory nerves supplying the affected part of the eye from the other center if it's upper motor but if it's lower motor the nuclei of the lower motor is destructed or not destructed lost function it's not completely destructed, but it's lost function completely so unable to close the right eye so the, so the right eye here is a clue that this is not a stroke this is bill's palsy so here each word here means something. They are telling you here between the brackets, this is not a stroke. And five days, they are saying it's more than three days. What's the three days window? The window for prednisolone. Okay. And right-sided facial weakness is Bill's palsy. And it's more confirming by pain around the ear before Bill's palsy. So here we are talking about something that's related to facial palsy, that is lower motor neuron, that already passed the window of prednisolone because it's five days so from the reading of the question i know what i'm going to choose as a correct answer from the following options let's see acyclovir has no rule in bell's palsy aspirin if it's stroke if i'm thinking that it could be stroke and the ct is negative for hemorrhage then i will give so it's if it's ischemic stroke i will give aspirin but this is not ischemic stroke this is not upper motor neuron carbamazepine no it has no rule it has no rule for bell's palsy conservative treatment let's keep it let's see the last one and then we will answer whether it's uh, appropriate or not the last one is prednisolone this is a trick here everyone will see facial palsy looking for prednisolone no, because the, the window of five or three days 
is passed already. If you have uh, this presentation come to you in the first 72 hours, prednisolone will be helpful. Uh, apart from this, conservative treatment is the best answer. So this is the way we are thinking, that all the questions, uh, the, the, the answers could be potentially correct. Prednisolone is not absolutely wrong, but conservative treatment is more accurate, the most appropriate one. Uh, but uh, you can still uh, think of other qu other answers, thinking of that like there is weak evidence that acyclovir can be given in some cases of Bell's palsy, but is not the best answer. Prednisolone can be given after three days in some weak evidence, but it's not the best answer. Conservative treatment is the best answer because it's already past the window of three days. This is how they want you to think, how to think about the question. It's not it's straightforward. Most of the questions are not straightforward. You will not be able to answer the correct one unless you have very good competency uh, in the clinical knowledge, have very good infrastructure. So the source for practice here, question banks, and the question banks should be updated because the knowledge is continuously updating. The best two I would recommend is past medicine or BMG. One of them, BMG on, on examination, the one of them is enough. No need to go through both. You can you can find any other reference for question banks. But the point is that practice as much as you can. And for text reading, you can use one source only. And the best is Oxford Handbook General Practice. And you can use it along with the justification of answers because those have uh, those question banks have justified answer. They are they are giving you the right answer and why it's the right answer and why the other questions are not false answer. So in each question. You are receiving five information. Why this one is correct, why the other four are wrong. And you can read more about the topic to be to digest the whole situation. You can read also my own experience of PASIC part one uh, with uh, other advice topics in the Facebook page as well. So the recommended way to study for AKT exam is to solve the question bank questions and then repeat solving the wrongfully answered questions in number one step so it's not enough to solve it once you have to solve it twice and the one that were wrong you have to give more focus between brackets focus on your weak points okay the 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 principle of uh, studying from first page to last page equally is not advised you should give more effort to your weak points and your weak points is different than your colleagues weak point each one of us has his own fingerprint of weak points, just give them more effort to make them strong points rather than weak points. Read Oxford Handbook of General Practice and the suggested schedule for preparation, I put it in my website, you can review it, is three and a half months. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, more time to study daily, you can do it in three and a half months. If you have less time, then you can do it in six months. Past medicine has almost like 400, 378, 4,378. I think it has become more now. But uh, one remark that in MRTB International, administrative part is not required in international AKT. So you can skip the administrative questions that are specifically addressing the working as GP in UK. This is required in MRCB UK AKT exam, but not in MRCB International. Uh, you can finish like 60 questions daily for 73 days and solve the wrongfully answered questions for first time, like assuming it's 50%. So it would be like 100 a question into uh, 110 question in 20 days. So 20 days plus 73 days and solve wrongfully answered questions again. Step two, let's assume it's become 25% because you solve them twice. So it should be less. Uh, that would be 180 question daily for eight days because now you, you, you answered them before twice so i think you should you can finish uh, more uh, faster and if you can read 950 pages of oxford because uh, before that before 160 is administrative not required and you can finish like 11 pages daily for 90 days and revise again uh, 70 pages daily for 30 days this is a just a schedule I'm, I'm just going through it fastly because but you can refer to the schedule in the website uh, so is this also written as uh, detail this is 180 days six months study schedule those who have a uh, tough uh, duty they cannot uh, study more hours daily they can finish in uh, 180 days you can see what's what's most convenient to you uh, according to your uh, circumstances so 
what can one shot courses provide you in part one? I can help you in three ways connect you to WhatsApp study group and on demand help and guidance and evidence based meta statistics lecture that I have given it already. And all the above is free of charge for part one. The benefits in WhatsApp group that it helps you to stick to the schedule and group discussion of difficult questions and difficult topics and exchange of knowledge. And some colleagues are keen even to solve the questions together. But I suggest that if you're going to involve in group solving of questions, it sh you should be attending live, not just to read the discussions. Of You should attend live the discussion. So if you were able to do it, that's fine. Some of you may prefer to make it individual because sometimes like I have a question, I want to spend to read more about it before going to the next question. So I need to have like f some form of reviewing because this is my own weak point. I know some others, they may not, they may think it's not their weak point. So they will pass it quickly. But for me, I want to read it. I want to, to finish it. So that's why I think individual solving also can be a convenient to some of you. Uh, the rules of the WhatsApp group that you should be, should show seriousness, the ground rule that this, by the way, agreed by the members of the group that past medicine is mandatory to join and English is the only allowed language because some of some of the people in the group, they are not uh, Arabic speakers or any other language used and scientific discussions only. No, not allowed to, to use any other discussions, any social discussions and uh, four and five and six you can help me to set more rules according to your suggestions so if you suggest any other rules we can apply it any times this are this is your group you own it so you can make your own rules application form will be published it's already available in the link i will put it in the link in the uh, below the video and after submitting the form you'll be enrolled in the group automatically the second is on-demand help. As long as I'm alive and breathing, I have more than happy to guide you promptly. Just text me in WhatsApp and I'm more than happy that I'll answer all your questions as much as I can. With also the help of the group discussions, you can you can be able to, to clarify everything. And my personal WhatsApp is open for any queries. Just I'll answer you as soon as I can. The second is evidence-based medicine and statistics because it's difficult to some colleagues. They, they, they think they feel they are lost when, when it comes to evidence-based and statistics. So I explained the curriculum of MRCB International and the recording is available on the website website and the YouTube channel, the uh, EBM. Uh, watch it. It's one and a half hour. It's really beneficial, inshallah, to you. Now, the second is the OSCE or CSA exam. The OSCE exam is evaluating your consultation and clinical skills. As we said before, it's simulated patients, not true patients. And each station is 10 minutes only. So you are required to do history taking, relevant clinical examination, and management in 10 minutes. And the, the challenge is about the time. We can all do this in our clinic. We can spend one hour with the patient to do the best practice. But to do it in 10 minutes only, this is the challenge. And same as real life practice, but needs lots of practice, especially as regards time management. There is silent examiner will watch you and evaluate your performance. And the performance will be evaluated in a mark sheet in his hands in four main categories, the data gathering, the history taken, and the consultation skills, how you will care for the patient needs, for his welfare, how to show empathy, how to explain the condition very well to the patient, to share them in, their, in your decision, and examination skills and counseling skills, and management and investigation skills, according to the updated knowledge. He's evaluating you for all the four and giving you a satisfactory uh, performance, either pass, clear pass, or borderline pass, or fail. Unfortunately, books alone is never enough for OSCE. They are only aids, but the main cornerstone here is practice. So this is the trick in the OSCE CSA exam. And this is what uh, makes lots of colleagues unable to pass this exam because they do not understand or they do not realize how important the practice is. They think that if they just know the information from the book, they can go to pass this exam while they are they found that it's not like this. And it's exactly like swimming. If you read 100 book in swimming, but you did not go and practice swimming, you will not be able to swim unless you practice more and more and more. So it's all about practice. The three corners of OSCE exam is understand how to practice because you need to practice correctly and source of knowledge 
OSCE is a based uh, that should be updated and practice. And there are two ways to 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 go to prepare for OSCE exam either on your own or with orientation course. If you go on your own, you will have to read and watch random internet sources on your own, and it takes longer time, but not impossible. And not guaranteed to get the correct material, so you have to double check the references that you are using to find the correct reference because in the internet there are many false information or false performance uh, that could be accepted in some other exam format, but it, not in MRCGB. So it takes time and effort and not guaranteed to get accurate outcome or accurate results. The course is to take structured course based on a MRCB international exam format and save time and systemize your brain and put you on track from the beginning. This is the benefit of the course. However, it's not impossible to do it on your own. The sources of uh, knowledge for CCSA exam, there are many like CSA revision notes, get through MRCB, CSA symptom solver, MRCB, CSA cases, and the guidelines as well, like nice WHO guidelines are important and should be updated to the most recent guidelines. You cannot just open an old edition of any of those books. So practice, the third one, is the most important and the most neglected. You should practice enough and correctly. If you practice enough but not correctly, it's not accepted. And if you practice correctly but very few cases, it's not accepted accept as well. So this missing any of those, practicing enough or cor and correctly, is the main reason why candidates fail in CSE exam. The practice is 50% of the exam preparation. How we can help in, in OSCE exam? One shot courses uh, cover all the three domains for preparation. I'll go through them just quickly. You can review uh, another lecture, which is OSCE exam question and answers for detailed content of the courses provided. First, I provide you help to understand how to practice and the source of knowledge for OSCE exam based and practice. The three pillars of pre preparation for OSCE exam, I help you in all of them. Understand how to practice in OSCE story and also in workshop. I, I provide workshop, online workshop, interactive for preparation for the exam. Uh, section one contains all what you need to how to practice and the three interactive workshop how to practice using the one shot case scenarios written case scenarios and how to evaluate your performance so that you can go on your own for the rest of practice journey the source of knowledge for this a exam based uh, we are covering 300 topics from 16 updated sources up to 2023 and also in the new course 2024 as well the revision courses for the last week revision is also available and review of past exams since 2016. Smart interactive ebook uh, that contain index, uh, drug index, and uh, direct link to the video lecture. And essential visual, this is new in the fifth edition uh, of 2024, which is over 500 photos important for OSCE and CSA exam. All this knowledge, those, all these references are in one shot course. And literally, I have quoted from all these references the 300 topics that I uh, provided. Of course, I may choose like management the best in, for example, RCGP is written in very good way. I could choose like the investigation from CKS, the review, all the guidelines uh, in comparison to the nice guidelines and make sure, for example, if UpToDate has anything new added to all this. So I'm, I'm doing some form of reviewing of all these contents and reflected in one single source so that you don't have to open all those references. The second also to help you uh, regarding the practice is the examination videos, focused clinical examination videos. They are generally uh, prepared by me. Uh, 160 examination videos, performance and explanation, performance in the exam, uh, how to do the performance of the, uh, the, doing it without talking as if I'm in the exam in one minute, in one and a half minute. And I'm later on in another video, I'm explaining what I have done. And this is typically for uh, a low, uh, consistent with the MRCB international exam format. In the internet, you may find lots of examination videos, but very few of them uh, covering the MRCB international exam format. Because for example, you may find a video on YouTube that explaining neurology examination in 15 minutes. 
But in the exam, you have to do it in two minutes. So how are you going to do it in two minutes and to be focused, directed by the patient made complaint? This is how it's well covered in the examination videos of one shot. Uh, in uh, the practice, we have covered that uh, in section two already, I said in section two workshop contain clear pathway to practice. And I said already the 164 uh, examination videos, they are also pro enhanced by 115 examination points, summary slides. So after you watch the video, if you want to review the points that I have done in the video written, you can uh, review them. And there are highlighted points that are VIB steps. You must do it in your uh, clinical examination performance. Another thing also to help you to practice is written case scenarios. 170 written case ready-made scenarios composed of scenario for a doctor and a patient so that you can practice with your colleague and also fully perform 20 cases as key answers. And there are patient scenario as well as investigations. And uh, the scenario adopts the tools and environment for online practice if you want to practice online. and uh, these scenarios are classified to easy, moderate, hard, and enhanced by uh, the examination and investigation findings shown to you in the exam. And also, there is automated scored marking sheet for all the cases. For example, case number five, it has its own scored marking sheet. Once you finish the case, you can correct your own performance. You don't need an examiner to correct your performance to see whether you passed or failed. And according to the choices that you're going to choose in this automated score marking sheet, you will receive a final outcome, whether you passed this case or you failed this case. This is uh, the written case scenarios are based on the mini clinical uh, evaluation exercise, which is called mini case principle. This is evidence-based principle that I'm adopting it in scoring of the written case scenarios. And all those are uh, the same uh, very much similar, not the same, very much similar to the examination uh, of the of MRSGB International uh, examination uh, uh, correction. Or we can say the four domains, consultation, counsel skills, data gathering, examination, management, investigation. But just to be clear that this scoring criteria that I provided in the automated scoring chain is not related to the official exam scoring. Nobody knows the exact official exam scoring in details. Nobody knows it. So this is mine and this is generally based on the mini kicks principle you can look for it in google this is evidence-based uh, um, principle uh, which is what went well what didn't go well and areas for improvement in uh, this was the basis that i adopted in uh, implementing this score marking sheet so the the workshop it's uh, composed of three interactive sessions that you can uh, participate, you can join us. And even if it's recorded, the video is recorded, you can still participate. I will teach you how to participate with us in the recorded workshop as well. You will feel confident to use the score marking sheet in all the cases. Not this only, the help you to practice also recorded case scenarios, which contains recorded mock exams for 320 exams done for candidates they did actual exam and it's recorded their performance and after their performance is done in 10 minutes i'm giving them constructive feedback audio and tell them why the, they passed or fail uh, according to their performance i'm giving detailed comment not this only this audio but also enhanced by catalog uh, summary reports there are summary reports audio and also merged audio feedback and also all these audios are available offline and there is enhanced written catalog the catalog of record scenarios is brand new it's going to be released in fifth edition that all these recorded case scenarios summary of the feedback are given in a point written points so that if you don't have time to listen to all the 320 recorded case scenarios you can read them at least read the feedback to learn uh, from them and it's uh, it's clickable. You can just click on the catalog. It takes you to the recorded case if you want to listen to it. The uh, do's and don'ts are 25 short audios uh, that of the common pitfalls, mainly candidates who have previous unsuccessful attempts of OSCE, they are receiving report of unsuccessful candidates, why they did not pass the exam. They are receiving a report 
from the official board of the exam. This report handles 25 items. I am covering them all and how to improve in any of them if you receive it as a feedback. Also, continuous communication and support. Very important that I'm providing support to all of you. Uh, broadcast messages for critical updates and special broadcasts for revision before the exam and help you to match with study partner to practice either online or physical. Also, there are other courses, extra courses on demand and availability to help you to practice the mock exam and mini mock exam as well as solo practice, extensive practice course and examiner's audit service. And alhamdulillah, we managed since 2018, since we started to implement this course of over 380 colleagues to pass the OSCE exam. So how to apply for the exams? since you know now uh, all about them, how to apply for them if you decide to go for any of them. First of all, for Cypress exam, contact this email and you'll be directed later for the process of application. They will do some form of interview online with you and then they will direct you to the process if you can if you confirm your eligibility to direct you for the rest of application. Uh, the next one is Dubai. Once the registration date uh, opens in the website, send the following to the this email, the coordinator, uh, photocopy of current certificate registration uh, and photocopy of passport and photocopy of qualification and photograph endorsed by senior member of uh, the department, like uh, your photograph, but signed by your senior member that this is your, your identity, this is your photo. Copy of documentation as evidence of eligibility, like for example, uh, training three years or experience three years, and completed valid certificates of uh, CPR in before the CSA exam. And after the application approval, you will be directed for payment. These uh, applications you will send on uh, to email to the email, uh, and you will receive acceptance. Once you receive acceptance for the eligibility, you will be directed for the payment depending on the exam that you have requested. For South Asia, once the registration opens on the website, download the application form. You have to download the most updated one once the registration opens and print it and fill it as hard copy, handwriting. You will not send the, the requirements by email, such as Dubai. You'll have to send it hand uh, ha uh, send it by by post mail, uh, fill it by handwriting, and attach all the required document, and send it with the payment draft to the address shown here. And this is the application form for South Asia. I'll go through it in details. First of all, the candidate number, if you already had previous unsuccessful attempt, you should have already candidate number. If not, you will just write your uh, f first name here and, and last name here, and then fill the name you want to be uh, to have in your record, and then address and other contact details. And then you will write here uh, dates of part one taken previously. If you take part one, you have to fill it here. And uh, here, the name and location of medical school graduated from, date of qualification, uh, country of postgraduate clinical experience, the, the country in which you have the eligibility uh, clinical years of training or experience, you have to write it here, and country of ethnic origin where you are originally from. A registration authority is the, country, the, the authority that given you license to practice, to practice as a physician. Which what is the registration authority? For example, uh, the Saudi Arabia, it's Saudi Council for Health Specialties. And if you have registration number, write it. If you are unemployed, if you have a license from your own country that you graduated from, you can write the registration authority and registration number. And date of full registration, if there is date of expiry, you can write the date uh, of expiry. If not, just leave it uh, empty. And then choose what makes you eligible to the exam. You have to click on one of them, just click. And then provide the document, attach it with the application that prove the choice that you have chosen that you are eligible for the exam, such as five years experience. You have to provide evidence of five years experience and then choose below the examination center. Of course, Abu Zabi is removed, not here anymore. You will find it here, Riyadh, in the new application. And then uh, if you're going to send a draft, bank draft, payment, you have to write the bank account of the draft issuing, not necessarily to be your bank account, 
uh, to your own bank account could be your friend bank account but the most important is to write the draft correctly uh, to, to make the right draft with the right amount and then write the bank account and bank name this is in uh, this is the how it looks like the bank draft it should be written like this the, the the amount of money and to to write here MRCB International South Asia and this is the um, MICR number it's very important to be uh, there uh, they are writing this in the application should be provided by must MICR number this is the attachment that they are requiring you to put photocopy of qualification uh, passport size photograph uh, should be attested by someone either supervisor or MRCB international graduate, job experience as well as the bank draft. You can pay also telegraphic transfer. Uh, you should provide the receipt, uh, the hard copy of the receipt. You should attach it to the papers as well. And then uh, you will write signature, full name and date. And that's it. this is how to apply for uh, the MRCB international. Finally, uh, you could have lots of questions if you watch this lecture as recorded. You may contact me anytime. Those are the uh, channels of communication. Uh, I'm more than happy to receive any of your queries. Uh, and uh, you can find the further uh, important links. I'll put them in the comments below the video, inshallah. Uh, so this concludes our lecture. And I'm more than happy to receive your questions. Uh, let's see which question. There is one question that I am already trained here in UK, got GMC. This question about recognition of UK for MRCB International. Uh, I am already trained here in UK. This colleague is already in UK and already got the GMC. Will it be easier? My, this is a very good question for people who already started their pathway of MRCGB UK. And they are asking whether this GGPR pathway helped them in any way. I really don't have a clear answer right now because this is very something very brand new. But let me tell you one thing that if you know the process of CGPR pathway and you apply it along with all the requirements and you think this way is much easier for you than uh, continuing your current pathway of career then go for it but if your question was would it act would it add to me any extra benefit i prefer to contact the gmc about this issue because this your situation is exceptional and i think they should have exceptional answer as well because i think they don't have any uh, explanation of this particular situation uh, this G cgpr pathway mainly addressing people who never worked in uk who never traced a career in uk before so Perhaps you could contact the GMC. Uh, I put their number in uh, the WhatsApp number. Just contact them and see how they are going to reply to you. This could be better. Regarding the induction program, uh, program three to six months in UK, is it paid? Yes, it, there are fees for the IIP, but I'm not sure how much. And also the duration is variable, depend on your outcome of your assessment. They will give you some form of assessment and MCQ. According to your uh, replies according to your outcome of the assessment they will advise for three months or six months or uh, i really to be honest i don't have any much details about iip except general idea the the principle of iip but the details of iip it, uh, it needs you need to read more but uh, as you know it's a later step and once you get the gmc license you can later on look for the induction program uh, details because you'll not be eligible to join it unless you get the GMC license. You have to get the GMC license first, as far as I know. Uh, we can also verify this information if it can be inclu uh, included earlier. Uh, can you explain about the UK new release ease pathway rules? Uh, this is doctor, I think you did not join us from the beginning of the lecture because I explained it already in details. I think... Uh, the necessary details. I think if you need further details, I think you should read the uh, specialty specific guidance. It's really beneficial. This all, the one I showed you, uh, I will get back to the paper, this one. Just to uh, just back earlier to the UK. This one, the one uh, I showed you before. 
this is uh, from the reference of this one. This evidence is called specialty specific guidance. In uh, uh, this provided by the GMC for the new CGBR pathway. So it you not only to read it, you must study each single word of this guidance because the more you understand it, the easier you will apply. The less mistake you will commit when you do your application. And whenever you have doubt about this uh, special specific guidance, you can always inquire. You can always contact the GMC. This is their number. They reply in WhatsApp. So just uh, uh, reply to uh, ask them the question, and they will give you the straight forward uh, the, the 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 clear answer, or they will refer you to someone who you might contact to get more details. Okay. Uh, I have five years of experience in ICU, uh, NICU, emergency department. I will be eligible to apply for a master's degree international. They want general practice experience. General practice experience, not specialty experience of three years. So here they might consider the emergency department experience as a general practice exceptionally. So you need to direct, ask them directly. Better to prepare your documents that show your experience and ask them directly, email them. Uh, I think it's mrcgb.southasia at gmail.com. They are very responsive. They are very cooperative. You can inquire about specific individual uh, situations such as you. Uh, Dr. Fatma asks, is MRCGB is beneficial in Australia? Uh, also, uh, I explained this in details. Yes, definitely. MRCB South Asia is beneficial in Australia to bypass the pathway of two years of FR ECGP preceded by the standard pathway of required AMC exam, Australian Medical Council exam, followed by two years of FR ECGP. All this you can override. You will not pass AMC exam. And you can finish FR ECGP in only six months in, uh, working under supervision in Australia. So... The Australian pathway, in six months, you can finish uh, the FR ECGP and uh, exams and uh, get the FR ECGP certificate to work as a GP in Australia. And of course, FR ECGP is very strong certificate to work overseas anywhere. You can work in New Zealand, you can work in uh, Gulf countries. It's uh, considered as consultant in all, almost all countries in the world, as far as I know, they are considered as consultant family practitioner. Uh, let's see if there are any more questions in the uh, WhatsApp. Is pass medicine alone enough to pass part one? Look, I I suggest to finish pass medicine, pass medicine very well and complement it with uh, general, uh, Oxford Handbook of General Practice. This is my recommendation. This is my own experience in, uh, in preparation for part one. However, I know some excellent colleagues who only went through this or passed uh, part one with pass medicine alone, but they reviewed it very carefully. But you cannot count that this is highly reliable uh, because it, it's variable from one individual to another. If they have a background from other exams or they have very good knowledge, uh, so it might be different from one person to another. So, so like, for example, some colleagues who already have MRCP or they, they finish part one MRCP and part two, another, another Royal College examination. So they have background about what's the, the the purpose of clinical scenarios they will prepare in less time definitely and they may write they might need less sources to go through the exam uh, so it's it's also depend on the visual variation but if you want to prepare for the worst scenario let's assume that you that you are that your knowledge is weak and you need to prepare from scratch better to finish past medicine along with oxford handbook general practice okay uh, the question that uh, Asked by uh, Dr. Uh, F. Sarwar, uh, are you going to upload the share in the video? Yes, yes, this video it will be recorded and published, inshallah, in YouTube as well as uh, in, uh, in Vimeo as well.
Thank you, Dr. Rasha. Uh, two months is enough for part two preparation. Part two preparation has a separate lecture, inshallah. You can refer to it. I put it in the link. OSCE CSA exam, questions and answers. There is separate lecture for part one preparation. There is separate lecture for part two preparation. And in this lecture, I'm explaining in details how to prepare what's the duration required. But uh, uh, to be answering your question briefly, is two months is enough? Two months can be enough if you are fully, uh, uh, we can say, you have time to prepare. You know how to prepare and you have full-time preparation. So you can, you, can pre you can prepare up to five hours daily. Yes, you can. But you should be uh, directed well to practice well and to uh, override the orientation period very quickly so that you can go and enroll in practice as early as possible. But two months is enough if you have time to practice daily. But if you have, if you don't have time and you are full time duty and very busy, no, I suggest to make it longer. Two months will not be enough at this point. Okay. Uh, is there subscription for part two OSCE? Yes, uh, the sub, uh, the OSCE courses are paid. There are free services that are providing in YouTube channel and Facebook page, but the one that I'm referring to the the uh, how one shot can help you. This is paid subscription. The details you can uh, contact in WhatsApp and share with you all the details available for the uh, fees of the course. So I think this uh, concludes all your questions. Thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, if there are any further questions, uh, if you're listening to this uh, lecture as recording, you can ask me anytime through uh, the, the channels of communication that I've said earlier. I will get back to it again just to uh, end with the... Uh, With it, you can contact me, contact me in any of those uh, communication channels, and also the Facebook page contain many updates. If after this recording there are any updates as regards the uh, MRCGB or its recognition, you can always follow the page to get the latest update. Thank you very much for honoring me today, and uh, see you inshallah in a uh, future lecture. Thank you very much. Subhanallah, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.